Starting us off at number 10 is Printer's Alley. Back in the 18th century, Printer's Alley got its name for the many publishing companies and printing shops that operated within it. But while it was a straight and narrow place of business by day, at night it transformed into the men's quarters and served a very different crowd, offering men a night away from their wives. It was during this time that the Southern Turf Building was managed by a man named Ice Johnson. But in 1914, when Prohibition hit, his once booming business of drinking, gambling, and lodging came to a crashing halt and was forced to close. This sent Johnson into a depressive spiral, and as legend has it, declaring that he would rather die than leave his home, Johnson took his own life in this very alley. Soon after, people began reporting seeing his apparition in the third floor window, and to this day, he remains a popular figure in the alley. Now the Tennessee Publishing Company, the ghost of Ice Johnson seeks out to terrify the employees, sometimes with small pranks like moving things from their desks or moving furniture bore their eyes, but if you anger him, he may appear in a full bodied apparition that will send you running for miles. Coming in at number 9 is Tennessee State Prison. Now, it probably doesn't come as a huge surprise that a prison is riddled with terrifying entities, however, the Tennessee State Prison is in a league of its own. The major reason being is that this correctional facility housed the electric chair for the state, and between 1916 to 1960, 125 prisoners met their fate by electrocution. However, it wasn't just those sentenced to death that are believed to haunt these halls. While the prison was still in operation, it was notorious for overcrowding, riots, and escapees, and it seems that many souls that died here are unable to escape its grasp. People that visit often report hearing strange sounds like the clanging of something along the bars, or hear footsteps approaching behind them, only to turn around and see that nothing is there. However, nothing is as bone chilling as the screams from the electrocuted inmates that are said to echo throughout the abandoned building loud enough to make your ears ring. Coming in at number 8 is the Opryland Resort. Built in 1977, the Opryland Resort is considered one of Tennessee's most luxurious hotels. However, don't be fooled by the age of the building, it is said to be haunted by a myriad of horrifying entities, the most famous of which is the Lady in Black. One employee in particular had a haunting encounter several years back. He was managing a store that remained open until midnight, which was much later than most establishments. He usually left around 2 am after stocking and getting things ready for the next day, but one particular night, as he was leaving, he saw what appeared to be a blurry woman standing at the top of a staircase dressed in customary Civil War attire. The man knew right away it was the apparition of a spirit, and wanted to remain calm so as not to anger her. But when he went to go speak, she suddenly disappeared right before his very eyes. But that's not the worst of it. Another woman who stayed at the hotel when she was nine recalls waking up precisely at three in the morning every night she was there. And each time she would open her eyes, the lady in black would be standing over her bed watching her sleep. And she wasn't alone. Many other residents claimed to have been woken in the night by a woman whispering in their ear, or by hearing the blood curdling screams of a woman in the night. So if I were you, I might look for a different place to stay. Next up in our number 7 spot is the Two Rivers Mansion. Built back in 1859, this mansion was once a part of a huge 1,000 acre plantation. And just like every plantation of the time, it has an extremely dark past. As the legend goes, during the mansion's construction, the remains of nearly 100 indigenous people were found along the property. However, despite realizing they had accidentally begun construction on a burial site, rather than burying the remains elsewhere, they decided to toss them in with the rest of the construction debris. However, as you can imagine, this angered the spirits to great lengths, and ever since that day they have haunted all who reside on the property. Staff and visitors alike claim to have witnessed sudden flickering of lights, strange orbs of light, doors mysteriously locking and unlocking on their own, or the sound of loud footsteps when no one else is around them. However, the entity that should really be feared is the Lady in 
in black, who can be seen gliding around the mansion or running through the acres surrounding the house, terrifying all that come face to face with her. Next up at number 6 is the Pegram County Cemetery. Back in 1970, a group of developers began bulldozing the area along the Harpeth River to build some new housing. However, it wasn't until it was too late that they realized the land they had dug up included the Pegram Family Cemetery. Now completely destroyed, they decided there'd be no harm in selling the dirt from the area, and eventually, over time, it ended up being spread across several of the nearby counties. However, to their shock, once the houses were finished being built a few years later, Harpeth River completely flooded and ruined every last one that resided on the previous cemetery grounds. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. Apparently, ever since, the area floods with alarming regularity, leading many to believe that the developers unwittingly released a curse on the land. But it's not just water that is causing an issue here. Apparently, there have been reported fires that reignite almost immediately after being extinguished. And residents of the area regularly report seeing tombstone apparitions materialize in their backyards. In fact, locals and tourists alike agree that there is often a bad energy in the air, which is often attributed to the angry spirits seeking revenge for their remains being disturbed many years ago. Next up at number 5, the Bell Witch Cave. One of the most well-known haunted locations in all of Tennessee, the tales of it being haunted by an evil entity go as far back as the early 1800s, and have been very well documented throughout the years. As the story goes, sometime in the late 16th century, there was a huge feud between two neighbors, John Bell and Kate Batts. Now, Kate believed that John had cheated her somehow on a land deal, and so to seek revenge would routinely torture his daughter. This of course made John act out, and the two spent most of their lives trying to get back at one another. In fact, she was so hellbent on revenge that the feud even lasted until her very dying breath. On her deathbed, Kate, who was believed by all in the town to be a witch, allegedly cursed the entire Bell family and promised she would haunt them for the rest of eternity. Ever since that day, a terrifying entity is said to haunt the cave. Even Andrew Jackson, former president who spent a night there once famously said, quote, I would rather face the entire British army than to spend another night with the bell witch. Those that visit the property today say they hear chains rattling or strange knocking sounds, but every single visitor leaves wishing they had never stepped foot inside. Coming in at number 4, the Congress Inn. While today the Congress Inn serves as an affordable option for an overnight stay in the city, during the Civil War it was used as a makeshift hospital. However, it's said that as the bodies needing a burial kept growing in numbers, doctors began running out of places to put them, and eventually were left with no other option than to cement the corpses into the walls. However, as it turns out, it is very hard for spirits to leave a property when their corpses are cemented into the walls, and these soldiers are rumored to be very angry about the way their corpses were dealt with. And so, they take it out on the people who stay in the hotel. Visitors who've dared to stay a night claim to hear peculiar whispering from the walls, lights flickering, or loud footsteps in the hall even when they appear empty, as well as gunshots and the sounds of cannons in the night. All of which is terrifying, but whatever you do, stay away from room 102, as that is where the most terrifying apparition is said to reside. One man recounted his stay there, saying he woke in the middle of the night to find he was being pinned down by a horrifying spirit, and was unable to move for what felt like an entire minute. However, as soon as he went to scream for help, the force suddenly lifted and disappeared back into the walls. Needless to say, the man packed his bags and looked for a new place to sleep for the night. And I would suggest the same for you. Next up at number 3 is the Fairview Plantation. Once the home of cruel and wealthy slave trader Isaac Franklin, it has long been believed that not only is this house haunted by the souls that were 
here many years ago, but that anyone who resides in its walls will fall under a dark curse too. As legend has it, it all started when Franklin and his wife moved into the Fairview home, and after adding four new members to their family, each and everyone died before they became adults. And it's believed that each of their spirits haunts the grounds to this day. However, the curse didn't end there. Once Franklin passed and his wife remarried, the mansion was vacant for several years, until the Civil War or Union soldiers sought it out to be used as a makeshift hospital. However, many are said to have perished within its walls, one of which was said to have written his will in a library book with his own blood. Which just sounds like a recipe for a haunting if you ask me. From there, the property was sold several times, but no one stayed much longer than a few months, as they were inundated with supernatural entities and bad luck. One resident, Charles Reed, a horse breeder, lost 28 of his prize winning horses when a lightning storm set fire to the barn, while others were haunted by Union soldiers crying in agony or covered in blood from brutal battles, or by the young spirits of the Franklin family crying out in the night. So even if ghosts don't scare you much, unless you're looking to fall under a century old curse, I'd steer clear. Coming in at number 2, the Union Station Hotel. One day a woman was having a smoke out on the hotel's old platform, and witnessed a strange woman wandering around in vintage clothing. But Right before her eyes, she hopped over the rail and dropped into the tracks. The woman began to scream and cry out, believing she'd just witnessed someone jump to her death. But then, all of a sudden, the woman was gone. Next, she saw a man, dressed as a soldier, wandering the platform, waiting for someone. But just as the girl had, he disappeared in a flash. Believed to be the ghosts from World War II, as the legend goes, a young woman named Abigail said goodbye to her beloved at this very station before he left for France. Abigail was deeply sad to see him go, but promised that she would wait for him and meet at this very spot once the war ended. Then, after the war, as promised, she went to the station and waited only to find out he had been killed in service. So heartbroken, Abigail threw herself in front of a moving train to end her misery. It's believed that both ghosts are stuck in a loop, and that she takes her life only for him to arrive moments later. But sadly, they always miss each other. However, they aren't the only entities to haunt the hotel's walls. Guests that stay in room 711 often complain of lights flickering or stomping coming from the roof, despite that they are the top floor of the building. Some even say it sounds like heavy furniture is being dragged in the early hours of the morning. But the most frightening thing is when people are woken in the night by the blood curdling scream of the woman who took her own life. And last up today in our number one spot, the Ryman Auditorium. This auditorium has long been the place of many incredible concerts and shows. However, despite its long standing list of famous performers, it's also believed to be the most cursed building in all of Nashville. The auditorium opened its doors to the public way back in 1892, but it wasn't until around 1943 when rumors of its haunting began to surface. The reason behind the alleged curse of the building Building? Well, between 1943 to 1974, the auditorium became famous for hosting the Grand Old Opry, a radio station turned stage show for up and coming country singers. But tragically, 37 performers died shortly after their performance at the auditorium, some facing their fate in car accidents or fires, while others were believed to be killed. Eventually, the Old Opry found a new home, but still the curse remained, and an alleged other 14 acts died shortly after performing on the cursed stage. But it's not just the curse that should make you nervous to visit this building. It's also said to be haunted by Captain Thomas Ryman, who the building is named after. You see, contrary to his wishes, the space began taking on different kinds of acts, like plays and comedy shows, which has apparently angered the entity over the years, who had always wanted it to be a purely music-based venue. According to some patrons, Ryman's loud footsteps can be heard stomping across the stage when there's a performance he is particularly unfond of. And some have been so freaked out by his apparition that they left the theater entirely, never to return. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Gongium Psychiatric Hospital. This hospital is widely regarded as one of the most haunted places in the world. Abandoned in the 1990s, this hospital quickly became a popular destination for urban explorers and ghost hunters alike. Its eerie, decaying, corridors and resting medical equipment have been the subject of countless
countless horror stories and urban legends over the years. It really is the perfect backdrop for a horrifying tale, but it's not just the dilapidated building that gives Gonjiem its reputation. The hospital has a dark history with reports of mistreatment of former patients, some so bad it even led to death. Some say that the souls of those who died within its walls still haunt the place to this day. In 2007, a horror movie called Gonjiem Haunted Asylum was released based on the legend of the hospital, and of course the movie only added to the site's notoriety, drawing more thrill seekers to its doors. Despite its haunting reputation, the hospital remains off limits to visitors, with authorities sealing off the area to prevent accidents and to preserve its historical significance. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Yong Diok House. The Yong Yong Diok House, located in the countryside, has long been rumored to be haunted. The old house is said to have a dark history with tragic events that took place within its walls. Local legends claim that the house was once owned by a very wealthy family who met an untimely and extremely gruesome end. Some say that the family was cursed, while others believe that the house itself is cursed with a malevolent spirit that haunts its halls. Visitors to the house have reported hearing strange noises, seeing ghostly apparitions, and feeling an overwhelming sense of dread. Many have even claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of a woman dressed in traditional Korean clothing. Despite these spooky details, people from all over the world still try to visit the house to catch a glimpse of the paranormal activity it holds. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, there's no denying that this house is a place shrouded in mystery and intrigue. In our number 8 spot today, we have Yang Maland. Also known as Ghost Park, this place is a spine-chilling destination for the bravest of thrill-seekers. This theme park was once a bustling amusement park with thrilling rides and attractions that brought joy to visitors of all ages. However, after a very tragic accident in 1999 that resulted in a horrible death, the park was abruptly closed and left to decay. Since its abandonment, visitors have reported eerie encounters and unexplained sightings throughout the park. Some claim to have seen ghostly apparitions wandering among the decaying rides, while others have heard haunting screams and disembodied laughter echoing through the halls. The park's rusty and broken down structures that are overgrown with vines and weeds only add to the really eerie atmosphere. Of course, while the park is closed, it doesn't mean people have left the park alone. Instead, people continue to try and enter the park in search of a haunting tale of their own. This is not for the faint of heart, however, as it is said that the ghostly inhabitants of the park still roam its grounds, waiting to scare and torment anyone who dares to enter. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Gyeonggi Lion. Forest Park. Located in Seoul, this park has gained notoriety as one of the most haunted places in the country. The park was built on the site of a former railway track, which was abandoned after a tragic accident in 1995. Since then, locals have reported strange occurrences, including ghostly apparitions, disembodied voices, and sudden drops in temperature. You know, just like the haunting staples. Legend has it that the spirits of those who lost their lives in the accident still roam the park, seeking vengeance for their untimely deaths. Visitors have reported feeling an overwhelming sense of unease and hearing eerie whispers in the darkness. Many refuse to enter the park at night, fearing they may encounter one of the vengeful ghosts. Rumor has it that there has even been attempts to exercise the spirits out of the park, but still, the haunting persists. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Nulbaum Garden Restaurant. This restaurant is a very beautiful but extremely eerie establishment, perfect if you're looking for a meal with a side of the ghostly. This restaurant has been known to locals for years as a popular spot for delicious Korean cuisine and breathtaking garden views, but there are some who claim that the restaurant is haunted by the ghosts of its past. Like any good haunting, this story starts off with a tragic accident that took place many years ago at the restaurant, which is apparently left behind a restless spirit. Some visitors have reported hearing strange noises, feeling sudden chills, and even seeing apparitions while dining at the restaurant. Despite the spooky rumors, Many brave diners continue to visit the restaurant, hoping to catch a glimpse of the otherworldly activity. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, there's no denying that this restaurant has an undeniable aura of mystery and intrigue that draws in visitors from all over the world. So, if you're feeling adventurous and are in the mood for some delicious Korean food with a side of supernatural thrills, make sure you pay a visit to this haunted eatery. But don't say that I didn't warn you. In our number five spot today, we have Yon Pion Island. This island is a small tranquil island located off of the western coast of South Korea. Beneath its serene exterior, however, lies a dark history of conflict and tragedy. The island was the site of a bloody naval battle between
between North and South Korea in 2002, and again in 2010, resulting in numerous casualties and extensive damage to the island's infrastructure. In the aftermath of the battles, many residents of the island reported very strange occurrences and unexplained phenomena, leading to rumors that the island is haunted by the ghosts of those who perished. Locals have reported hearing disembodied voices, seeing apparitions, and experiencing just, you know, that uneasy feeling while on this island. Because of its strategic position, the island is still visited by people each year, and still the haunting stories continue. Whether the island is truly haunted or not, its very tumultuous past is a testament to the enduring legacy of war and the resilience of the human spirit. In our number four spot today, we have the DMZ. Despite what this name says and implies, the Korean demilitarized zone is perhaps one of the most militarized places in the entire world. This is the location that marks the separation between North and South Korea and was established to serve as a sort of buffer zone between the two countries. There are tons of military facilities in this zone and only high ranking officials are allowed in. This is exactly what led to the creation of the civilian control line, which is a line that created an additional buffer zone to the demilitarized zone, which is meant to further restrict access to any civilians or unauthorized personnel. In our number three spot today, we have the Paldang House. This house has gained a reputation as one of the scariest and most haunted places in the country. Originally built in the 1920s, in its previous life, this house served as a school before it was abandoned in the 1980s. Since then, the building has been the site of numerous ghost sightings and paranormal activities. Apparently, when the house was still a school, it was led by a horrible, very cruel headmaster who ended up dying under some exceptionally mysterious circumstances. Many believe that his vengeful spirit still haunts the halls of this house, along with the ghosts of former students who also perished there. Visitors to the house have reported hearing noises, feeling drops in the temperature, and some have even seen apparitions. Some have claimed to have been pushed or touched by invisible hands, while others have just felt that overwhelming sense of dread and also a sense of fear. Despite this terrifying reputation, this house continues to draw brave souls who seek a thrill and glimpse into the world of the supernatural. In our number two spot today, we have the abandoned cobalt mine. The Gyeongsan abandoned cobalt mine is a place shrouded in mystery and eerie tales. This mine was once a thriving hub of activity, with miners working tirelessly to extract cobalt from deep within the earth. However, the mine was eventually closed due to safety concerns, and now it has become a place for lovers of all things paranormal. According to local legends, the mine is haunted by the ghosts of the miners who lost their lives within its dark tunnels. Visitors have reported feeling a chilling presence and hearing unexplained noises while exploring the abandoned site. Many have even claimed to have seen apparitions of deceased miners. Despite its spooky reputation, this mine remains a very popular attraction for those who, you know, want that adrenaline rush. However, visitors are advised to exercise caution when exploring the mine's dark and twisting passages, as it can be a really dangerous and extremely unpredictable environment. You know, don't go unless you know what you're doing. I would never visit. I don't like ghosts very much, and I definitely don't know anything about mines. It would just be a terrible combination. And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the Naju House. The Naju House is a notorious attraction that has been shrouded in mystery and legends for decades. Located in the small town of Naju, this eerie house is said to be haunted by the spirits of the former owners who tragically died in a fire many years ago. Visitors who dare to enter the house are met with a chilling atmosphere and unsettling sounds that seem to come from all around them. Those who have entered the house claim to have experienced strange occurrences, such as doors closing by themselves and objects moving inexplicably. Some even report seeing apparitions and feeling an ominous presence watching them. This is one of those places that people explain leaves you with a chilling feeling that lasts long after you leave. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds like some sort of a vengeful presence that is probably better off just left alone. Number 10, White Rock Lake. White Rock Lake is an area that is filled with many legends. It's home to the ghost of the Lady of the Lake. Years ago, a young couple was driving home from a party along the lake late one night. The two were tired and ready to go home when the wife suddenly screamed at her husband to stop the car. A young woman in a long white gown had appeared in the road before them. The couple asked the woman if she needed a ride and she accepted. They drove on and all while the wife could hear the steady drip, drip, 
drip of water. But once they reached the address the woman had given them, they turned around to find her gone, leaving behind only a puddle. Confused, the couple got out at the address and knocked on the door. An elderly man answered. They told the man about the young woman they had just picked up, and he sighed and told them they were not the first couple to come knocking on his door late at night. The woman they had picked up was his daughter, who had drowned in White Rock Lake 10 years earlier. The lady of the lake has been spotted and even picked up many times since, and continues to haunt White Rock Lake in her white gown, looking for a way back home. And this is just sad. <laughs> Number 9. Adolphus Hotel The Adolphus Hotel was built on the former site of Dallas's original city hall in 1912, and the hotel has a reputation as one of the city's most prominent historical landmarks. In addition to being the oldest hotel in the city, it's no surprise it's also among the most haunted. One of the most famous spirits here is an apparition who appears in a 1930s era white wedding gown, the spirit of a jilted bride who was supposed to have been married in one of the hotel's glamorous ballrooms on the 19th floor, but ended up taking her own life at the hotel instead when her groom left her at the altar. Ever since that night, guests staying on the 19th floor report hearing a woman crying, footsteps running up and down the hall, and even the sound of rope creaking under the strain of a body. The bride spirit has been spotted wandering the halls after events and parties, still wearing her white dress and veil. Again, this is just incredibly sad. Staff and guests of the hotel also report an eerie feeling of being watched or of a presence in the room with them. Now, not all ghost residents have sad backstories, as many are believed to be former guests who checked in again during the afterlife because they had such a good time in the hotel back in their days among the living. Guess it's a cool place to be in in life and death. Number 8. The Coombs Creek Trail Located in Oak Cliff, this trail offers a serene, scenic path along Coombs Creek for nature lovers to enjoy. But everything is not as it seems, as this trail has an eerie history. Years ago, a young girl named Mary would ride her bike every day along the trail, but one day, Mary never returned home. It's still unknown whether Mary drowned in the creek, was struck by a passing train, or was taken, but she seems to have disappeared without a trace. Hikers still report seeing the figure of a young girl riding her bike dangerously close to the edge of the water, but when they call out to warn her, she vanishes into thin air. Others have reported seeing a small ghostly face of a young girl peeking at them from behind a tree. When they try to move closer to investigate, the face disappears. Then the face reappears further along the trail, inviting the hiker to follow her deeper and deeper into the woods. And if a ghost child is trying to get me to go deeper in the woods, I'm just going to turn around and leave. Number 7. The Majestic Theater The Majestic Theater is located on Elm Street in downtown Dallas. Elm Street? No, no, I've seen that movie before. Now, in the 1910s, it housed live vaudevillain performances before transitioning to screening films in 1922. The Majestic remained in business until the 1970s, and then its doors were reopened for live performances in 1983 after it landed on the National Register of Historic Places. Some say the theater's original owner, Carl Hoppitzel, still haunts the building, making sure things run according to his liking. One former employee claimed claims he shared an office space with Carl during his time there. He reports that one of his responsibilities each night was to ensure that the door in his office leading to the theater was locked, but each morning when he showed up for work, the door was wide open, and a strange chill would permeate from the room. When he mentioned this to his manager, he laughed and explained that this was only Carl, who liked to use the door to get into the theater and check up on things. Weird smells, stage props inexplicably moving, and a light hanging above the balcony illuminating on its own have all been attributed to Carl. His spirit is rumored to linger there to this day, making sure his theater runs smoothly and maybe catching a show or two. Number 6. Snuffers Restaurant on Greenville Avenue Snuffers is a popular local chain that serves classic American food, or at least that's what it says when I google it. But the location on Greenville Avenue serves up a lot more than just burgers. Customers and staff of the Dallas restaurant claim that the place is seriously haunted. Before Snuffers 
snuffers, there was an easy parlor. It seems that a man was badly injured after hours when a fight broke out at an employee party. He then stumbled into the bathroom where he drew his final breaths. Years later, once easy parlor became snuffers, the managers would sit at a table by the bathrooms each night to finish up closing paperwork. As they sat in the dark, near empty restaurant, they would listen as antagonized, stumbling footsteps made their way to the bathroom, then watch as the door creaked open by itself and never shut. In 2013, the original building was demolished and reconstructed, but reports of strange happenings didn't stop. Other employees have since reported feeling cold gusts of wind rush by them and doors slamming shut all on their own. Sounds like a dinner and a show to me. <laughs> Number 5. Flagpole Hill Just adjacent to White Rock Lake is a road leading to the infamous Flagpole Hill, the rumored location of a band of rock hurdling poltergeists. Yep, you heard that right, they just throw rocks at you. Passerbys report driving through the area late at night only to be pelted by a rain of pebbles. When they got out of the car to chase down the culprits, there were none to be found. Local legend identifies the ghost as three restless spirits tangled in the dark history of the area. According to the story, a construction worker ended their own life in the house on Flagpole Hill before its completion, and a hired hitman was later convicted of taking out the couple who occupied it. Now, don't think just because you're not in a car, you're safe. Those walking on foot rather than driving past seem to be just as unlucky. Hikers and other residents of the area have reported an unseen assailant pelting them with rocks as they pass by. Sounds like this place really rocks. Get it? Because. <laughs> So funny. Number four, the Miller Moore Mansion. Located in Dallas Heritage Village is Miller Moore Mansion. It was completed in 1857 and was the home of William Brown Miller, who served in the Confederate Army. This beautiful home is said to be haunted by an unidentified lady ghost who always seems to lurk near the nursery. Now, the general belief of who the lady is is the spirit of a woman named Emma. Now, Emma was the third wife of William Brown Miller, and allegedly everyone who encounters Emma tells a similar story. People see a woman going up the stairs and they describe the same woman, always wearing a long brown dress. She has been seen in the front foyer and people claim to have seen her in the middle window where the nursery is. Many Millermore visitors have also reported unexplained cold spots and a distinct feeling of being watched during their visit. Seems like Emma is always watching. Number three, Sons of Herman Hall. Herman Hall's website marks itself as the oldest freestanding wood structure in Dallas, as well as the oldest bar. And for over a hundred years, the hall has held concerts, parties, and dances. So no wonder the dead come back there to party. Both staff members and guests of the hall have reported strange occurrences, especially in late hours of the night. Some guests have seen paintings fly off the wall as thrown by some unseen force. Others have heard footsteps in the hallways and seen doors suddenly slam shut. Guests also claim to hear children laughing, even when no children were present, which is just creepy. Longtime staff members of Herman Hall report sensing a lingering presence and seeing flashes of light and shadow. One particular staff member recounts a time he and some other employees saw a couple dressed in Victorian era clothing walk past them and go upstairs, but about 30 minutes later when the couple hadn't returned, the staff went upstairs to find all the doors locked and no one inside them. I just think these ghosts want to return to their party days though. Number 2. Goatman's Bridge Goatman's Bridge, more formally known as the Old Alton Bridge in Argyle. Dating back to the 1930s, locals have told tales of the specter of a strange half man, half goat creature lurking beneath the bridge. The goat man is said to stand over seven feet tall with big horns and glowing red eyes, which to me just sounds like the devil, but I mean, hey, goat man is a cool name. Some believe the goat man remains dormant for years at a time and awakes only to hunt for prey. Now, the goat man isn't the only spirit on this bridge, as to keep him company is another spirit that of a young mother crying out eternally for her lost child. Residents making their way over the bridge late at night have reported hearing her ghostly wails. Some say the two ghosts are connected and that years ago the goat man stole the young woman's baby. When she found out, she threw herself from the bridge and her spirit has haunted it ever since. Now I already don't like bridges because of heights and being over bodies of water, but being on a haunted bridge? 
No, thank you. And coming in at number one is Miss Molly's Hotel. Located in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Miss Molly's Hotel is a little deceiving. In the lawless pioneer days of the Old West, Miss Molly's operated as a bordello, making working girls and their customers among the most common apparitions to appear here. One such customer even has a room named after him, the Cowboy Room, where he has been frequently spotted by guests and staff of the hotel. His name is Jake the Cowboy, and when Paula go became manager of Miss Molly's, she had no clue that it was haunted. After months, she reported that strange things started happening and she eventually saw Jake herself. She said, I saw him in full body, he walked into a room and shut the door behind him, and I went up and knocked on the door and opened the door and no one was there. That is when I knew that something was up because I'm sitting there thinking I know I'm not crazy. Another ghost there is assumed to be a former madame by the name of Josie King. Some suspect that she oversaw the house during its bordello days. Josie is seen a lot, usually at 3 a.m. at the foot of the bed, and allegedly Josie likes to watch people sleep. Um, no, no thanks. Guests can also look at the hotel's collection of creepy photographs or listen to eerie audio recordings captured through the years. Number 10, Ramaji Film City. Ramaji Film City is one of the biggest film cities in India, and it just so happens that it's also known to be quite haunted. Lightman and other workers have reportedly been shoved around, mirrors have been painted with weird marks, spotlights have been seen falling off along with the light men also falling from their spots. And amidst all this, many crew members have come across some severe injuries. Numerous women have also experienced being mysteriously imprisoned in rooms or having their garments torn off by a mystical force which is terrifying. Apparently, all of these are signs of this place being a haunted one. Safe to say that any film made there would definitely be haunted and I would not want to be a part of that at all. Number 9. Savitri Puel Hostel Think you could study with ghosts? This is a hostel where spirits have been seen by students. Apparitions with and without heads are noticeable from windows of some of the hostel rooms accompanied with loud thumps. The hostel security official Bakran said, I suddenly heard a lot of shouting from the fifth floor. It must have been around 3 a.m. then. When I reached the girls, they claimed they saw a mysterious person floating around. I checked the entire premises with two colleagues but couldn't find anything. Experiencing goosebumps at the slightest mention of the floating apparition, girls in the hostel keep their lights on while sleeping and let music play in the background. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do to keep those ghosts away. A student said, this is not someone's imagination, more than 10 of us have seen the ghost, don't dismiss this as mere superstition. I can't imagine trying to get through school and then going home to be haunted by ghosts creepy stuff. Number 8. Tunnel number 3 Shimla Kalka train route. Tunnel number 3 was built by a person named Colonel Barag who was a British engineer. Well, to be clear, at first he did not build the tunnel correctly so he was fined and due to this he was humiliated and during a walk with his pet dog he ended his own life. It said that his dog upon seeing his master bleeding profusely ran in a panic to a village for help but by the time people reached the spot, Barag had passed away. He was buried in front of the tunnel and after his death there were rumors of his ghost being seen lingering in the adjacent areas. It said that many people saw the ghost of the colonel in and around the tunnel. He is however believed though to be a friendly ghost who would not even shy away from having a friendly chat with the living. People here often tell stories of how they went for a walk in the tunnel, met the colonel's ghost, even sat down with him and shared a laugh. Now this doesn't seem nearly as scary if he's a nice ghost, but it would still be extremely unsettling. Number 7. Kaldara Kuldara is among the most haunted places in India. Known as the ghost village of India, the place had its villagers flee overnight. Some 300 years ago, it was a happy, great village, but according to the legend, the evil eyes of Salim Singh, the powerful and corrupt prime minister of the state, fell on the daughter of the village head and he desired to marry her by force. He threatened the village with grave consequences if they did not adhere to his wish. Now instead of submitting to the order of the triant, the villagers held a council and people of 85 villages left their ancestral homes and vanished. But this was not all. Before leaving, they put a curse on Kuldara that no one will ever be able to settle their village thereafter. 
To this date, the village remains barren, left almost the same as its inhabitants had left it centuries ago. It's also said that people who have tried to stay there at night have been chased away by a strange paranormal phenomenon. Number 6. Damas Black Sand Beach This beach is renowned for two things, one for its black sand and the other for being haunted. It is said that Dumas Beach was once used as a Hindu burial ground and hence is possessed by several haunting spirits that never left the region. Makes sense that a place that was a formal burial ground is haunted. That isn't rocket science. Folklore explains that the existence of black sand is because of the amount of ash created by burning the dead, which got mixed with the white sand of the beach and turned dark and shade. While there, people have claimed to hear someone whispering when they were alone on the beach, and there have been some cases in which people didn't return at all from their evening walk. I would not be caught walking near there. Ever. Number 5. Bangar Fort Bangar Fort is from the 16th century and was built by Raja Mahu Singh, the younger brother of Man Singh, a Mughal general. The place is home to stunning archaeological structures and it is said to have a history that is eerie and spooky. The town of Bangar had about 9,000 houses, but in 1720 the population of the place began to fall. It is said to have been cursed by Guru Balu Nath, which is the first among its two haunted histories by the Way. It was known to be the meditation spot of the guru who said that the only condition he would give up the spot was that the fort shadow does not touch him. That did not happen and the guru's curse ended up destroying the entire village. It was also because of this curse that roofs could not be constructed on the homes in the village as any roof constructed would collapse. The second legend of this place is a tanric who practiced black magic fell in love with Princess Radnevathai of Bangor. He tried to make her fall in love with him using black Black magic and tantric means, but she heard about the plan and threw the bewitched oil she was supposed to use on a rock, which eventually crushed the tanric to death. And honestly, good for her. Before dying though, he cursed the village for destruction. Even today, visitors are not allowed near the fort after sunset, and several tourists reported paranormal activities here. Number 4. Mukesh Mills Mukesh Mills in Mumbai has been a popular shooting location for several generations of Bollywood filmmakers. Set up by the East India Company in the 1870s, Mushka Mills was closed due to unreasonable losses in the business. Later, the building was completely burned by a fire whose origin is still unknown. It was never repaired and has been shut down since. Now, movie crews do not like to work here after sunset. Some have heard strange noises and reported their belongings being lost. People have seen shadows, heard footsteps, and felt a sense of being constantly watched by someone. Once, a movie actress actually got possessed and her voice completely changed. She warned the crew to get out of there as soon as possible. Another case at the Mukesh Mills involved a young actor who also got possessed during a shoot. He suddenly started rolling on the ground with his hands behind his back and got back to normal in a matter of a few seconds. Even the watchman of this place has reported seeing someone smoke and hearing music from inside the building, which sounds spooky. Number 3. Dow Hill Tourists who have visited this hill station of Darjeeling might not know about this. Dow Hill is a lesser known haunted place in India that has ghost fables connected to it. A small stretch of road in between Dow Hill and the forest office is called Death Road, which obviously means it's haunted. A young headless boy has been seen by woodcutters who see him walk down the road and disappear into the woods. Not only this, but people also feel like they're being followed and watched by a woman with grey clothes. Locals have also spotted a red eye staring at them too. Some people have gone mad and some even ended their own lives after going into this forest. Now forests in general are just creepy and with all this going on, I would be staying away. To make matters worse, there is a haunted boy school near the woods, which is said to be haunted as well. Locals feel a similar vibe to the forest near the school. Loud whisperings and footsteps have been heard between December to March as it is closed during this time. Well, at least they don't interrupt the boys studying. Number 2. Donna Paula As per the legends, there was a young girl named Paula Amaral de Sudo Mayer, hope I said that right, a relative of the Portuguese viceroy who fell in love with the local fisherman and married him against her family's wishes. One day, Paula's husband left for sea and never returned home. She waited for years for him to come and eventually turned to stone. Now, her stone body is said to be placed at the Cabo Chapel nearby. 
Sky. Another story says that the Portuguese viceroy got informed about her affair with the fisherman and he stopped her from meeting him. She resisted, cried and one day jumped into the Arabian Sea and ended her life to be with her lover. As soon as the viceroy found out, he put an order to make a statue of Paula near the place where she jumped and named it Donna Paula. Many locals have claimed to have seen the ghost of Donna emerging from the chapel on full moon nights wearing a shiny pearl necklace. Others claim that a pale woman comes from the sea wearing pearls and invites people to join her. The presence of two lovers has also been felt by many tourists and this is just sad. But I hope they are together in the afterlife. And coming in at number 1 is Bridge Raj Bavin, a palace that was once home to Major Charles Burton and now a heritage hotel and it is infamous for being a haunted property. The story goes that Major Burton's life was ended here by Indian sepoys during the mutiny of 1857. He was holed up in one of the upper rooms with his two sons as sepoys looted the place. When they surrendered after 5 hours of the siege, the soldiers ended the lives of all of them. The British later buried their body at the Kota Cemetery with full military rights and reclaim the property, which later became the property of the Maharaja of Kota. But in the 70s, the government renovated it and it became a hotel. The property soon became the talk of the town when people began saying that it was haunted by the ghost of Major Charles Burton. Even though his spirit does not really harm anyone, guards working here have often heard a man's voice speaking in English and commanding them to not fall asleep or smoke. And if they do fall asleep on duty, the ghost even slaps them to wake them up. This incident has happened with quite a few members of guards and I'm sorry but like imagine getting slapped by a ghost. <laughs> Though guests haven't had much of a problem here, some have complained of feeling a sudden discomfort in some parts of the palace hotel. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Ashis La Pa. This place is a remote desert area located in northwestern New Mexico that is known for its unique and otherworldly rock formations. These formations, which include hoodoos, spires, and arches, have an eerie and otherworldly quality that has led some to speculate that they could be from a parallel universe. The land landscape of this location is so unusual that it almost defies belief. The rocks appear to be twisted and distorted, as if they have been shaped by some unknown force. Some of the formations look like alien beings, while others resemble ancient ruins. Despite its remote location, Ashis Lepa has become a popular destination for hikers, photographers, and adventurers. Many visitors report feeling as if they have stepped into another world when exploring the area, and I don't blame them. The photos truly look like they could be from another planet. Whether or not this place is truly from a parallel universe, there is no denying that its otherworldly beauty and strangeness make it a truly unique and fascinating destination. In our number 9 spot today we have Racketsbrook. Also known as the Devil's Bridge, this structure is a unique and striking bridge located in Kromlau, Germany. The bridge was built in the 19th century and is famous for its unusual design, which makes it appear as though it could be from a parallel universe. The bridge is built in a circular shape and its arch is perfectly reflected in the water below, creating a complete circle. The effect gives the impression that the bridge is a portal to another world or dimension. The symmetry and precision of the bridge's design have led many to speculate that it was built using some kind of ancient technology or even by supernatural means. The bridge is also an important historical monument representing the engineering achievements of its time. While this place in itself doesn't necessarily look like it's from a parallel universe, the legends still persist today that suggest it might be the perfect place to enter one. In our number 8 spot today we have Pamukkale. Located in southwestern Turkey, this place is a natural wonder that looks like it could be from a parallel universe. This unique destination is known for its stunning white terraces and thermal pools, which have been formed over thousands of years by the natural mineral deposits in the area. The terraces of Pamukkale resemble a cascading frozen waterfall with sparkling blue pools of water at the top. The contrast between the white terraces and the blue water is truly breathtaking, and the site is unlike anything else in the world. Many visitors describe the experience of walking on the terraces as otherworldly, as the sensation of walking on the soft white surface is unlike anything else that they have ever experienced, and that is exactly why this place has the nickname 
Cotton Castle. The surreal beauty of this place has led many to speculate that it is a portal to another world or a place that exists outside of our reality. It is believed by many that the waters here are not only strikingly beautiful, but that they also contain healing powers, which makes it a spot that sees travelers from all over the world. In our number seven spot today, we have the Waitomo Caves. These caves are a unique and stunning attraction located in the North Island of New Zealand. The caves are known for their stunning display of glow worms, which light up the dark and seemingly endless caverns in a way that makes it seem like they could be from a parallel universe. As visitors enter the caves, they are immediately struck by the otherworldly atmosphere. The walls of the caves are adorned with glittering formations, and the silence is broken only by the gentle drip of water. The real magic of the caves, however, comes from the glow worms that inhabit them. These tiny creatures emit a blue-green light that illuminates the caverns in a way that feels almost supernatural. The experience of walking through the Waitomo glowworm caves is truly unique and unforgettable, and many visitors describe feeling as though they have stepped into another world. Whether or not the caves are actually a portal to a parallel universe, there is no denying that they are a stunning example of the natural beauty and wonder of our world. In our number six spot today, we have the Zhangyi Danxia Landform. Located in China, this place is a stunning and unique geological feature. The landform is made up of a series of multicolored rock formations that have been shaped by millions of years of natural erosion and deposition. The colors of the rock formations are so vivid and intense that it's almost hard to believe that they really are natural. It fully looks like a man-made creation, despite that not being the case at all. The layers of sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone that make up the landform have been exposed to the elements for millions of years, resulting in a surreal and alien-like landscape. Visitors to the area can explore it on foot or by car taking in the breathtaking views of the colorful mountains and valleys. The unique beauty of the landform has made it a very popular destination for tourists and of course for photographers from around the world who come to experience this otherworldly landscape for themselves. In our number five spot today, we have the White Sands National Park, another place in New Mexico because honestly, New Mexico is definitely a home to many unusual things. And the White Sands National Park is no exception, but it is unbelievable. Believable. This national park is a stunning destination due to its unique and surreal appearance. The park features a vast expanse of white sand dunes, which are composed of gypsum crystals and form an otherworldly landscape that feels almost alien. Visitors to the park are immediately struck by the contrast between the bright white sand and the vivid blue sky, which creates a very surreal and almost dreamlike atmosphere. The dunes themselves are constantly shifting and changing, creating a landscape that seems to be in a constant state of flux. The unique beauty of the White Sands National Park has led many to describe it as a portal to another world or a place that exists in another universe. Whether or not that is true, there is no denying that this park is stunning and unforgettable and a destination that should be on every traveler's bucket list. In our number four spot today, we have the Danakil Depression. The Danakil Depression is a part of the Afar Triangle in Ethiopia, and it is a geological depression that came about as a result of Africa and Asia moving apart. The divergence of three tectonic plates caused rifting and volcanic activity. This place is the hottest place on Earth in terms of average year-round temperatures, and it is also one of the lowest places on Earth at 100 meters below sea level. There are active volcanoes in the area, there are salt springs, sulfur springs, and it only gets about 4 to 8 inches of rain every year. What I'm saying is that this place is stunning and has an incredibly rich geological history, and it also fully looks like it could be from from another planet. This otherworldly landscape and quite inhospitable environment is the home to the Afar people. Somehow they have managed to overcome the odds and the obstacles and managed to thrive in this extreme environment. And it is said that this was made possible over the centuries by their ability to adapt to need less food and water than other humans. That's one of the most remarkable things I've ever heard. The Danakil Depression is a popular destination for adventurous travelers who are seeking an experience that is truly out of this world. Visitors can explore the area on foot or by camel, taking in the breathtaking views of the alien-like landscape. Despite the harsh conditions, the area is also home to a number of fascinating animals and plants that have adapted to this unique environment. In our number three spot today, we have the Pyramids of Giza. One of the most mysterious places on Earth has to be the Pyramids of Giza. I mean, 
how. For centuries, people have wondered and tried to find answers as to how they were built at all, let alone with the limited resources and without the use of modern technology. And they've been around for the last 4,000 years, so the durability alone is outstanding. This alone is the source of much mystery, but that's only the outside of them. What lies on the inside might just be even more so. The pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid of Giza, were believed to have been built as tombs for rulers and other wealthy people. That totally makes sense, except for the fact that there hasn't been any mummies found inside of them. Instead, there's just a plethora of secret, unexplored rooms, hidden doors and mirrors, you know, just regular ancient Egypt stuff. Many of these secret rooms remain completely unexplored over fear of damage. One more strange thing about these incredible creations is that they were built on the center of the earth. However they did this, they aligned them perfectly with Orion's belt, with no technology. Just pure brilliance. I'm saying, if anywhere is going to take you to a parallel universe, these pyramids will take you back in time to a completely different world. In our number two spot today, we have the Crooked Forest. Forests are already creepy, but this one looks like it's straight out of a Tim Burton film. The Crooked Forest in Poland. There's around 400 odd shaped pine trees near the town of Grafino. These trees are about 90 years old, and all of the trees from the base, they immediately bend towards the north and then slowly curve back towards towards the sky like other trees. Despite this odd bend, the trees are otherwise healthy. There's been so many theories as to how these trees got their bend, but none of them really stick. Some suggest it was a gravitational anomaly, but that's a little too far-fetched for me. I don't know, this isn't interstellar. Other theories claim that there were heavy snowfalls that could weigh down the branches, which could check out, but why is it just a select amount? I live in Canada. I've lived in Canada my entire life. We have lots of snow, and I've never seen a a sleepy hollow tree. My favorite theory is that the farmers were trying to make the tree curved on purpose to make stronger wheels because the grain direction would make for naturally curved wheels. But again, nobody knows for sure. What are your thoughts? Do we like the wheel theory? And finally, in our number one spot today, we have the Catatumbo River. Basically, in western Venezuela, right over the Catatumbo River, there are these insane, very intense lightning storms, and it is a complete atmospheric phenomenon. This lightning occurs during a 140 to 160 nights a year, 9 hours per day, and from 16 to 40 times per minute. That is absolutely insane. That is so much lightning. This place will transport you into a parallel universe where it's just lightning all the time. Another thing that's so fascinating about this lightning is that it is colorful and it doesn't produce any thunder. The lightning does change its frequency up from time to time and at one point it stopped for a few weeks and people thought that maybe it was going to have been exhausted forever, but that thankfully changed when the lightning came back, putting it right back on our list of mysteries that we just can't quite figure out. Many people have studied the lightning, trying to figure out how exactly it has been created and what makes this phenomena what it is, but we just aren't yet quite sure. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Briavel's Castle in Gloucester. I don't know, if I said that wrong, Remove some letters. I don't know what to tell you. Briavel's castle is a ruined Norman fortress located in the forest of Dean, and over the years, the castle has been the subject of many haunting tales and ghostly sightings. One of the most famous stories of that is the white lady who is said to haunt the castle. According to legend, she is the ghost of a woman who was wrongly accused of stealing from the castle and was subsequently executed. Her ghost has been reported to roam the castle's halls and corridors, and she has been seen by many visitors and staff members. Another famous ghostly tale from the castle is that of the phantom coach, who is said to drive up to the castle gates before disappearing without a trace. Legend has it that the coach is driven by the ghost of a former owner of the castle who was killed by his own wife and her lover. In addition to these tales, there have also been reports of unexplained noises and strange apparitions throughout the castle. Despite the many stories of ghosts and hauntings, this castle remains a popular tourist destination and a fascinating fascinating piece of British history. Why not head over for a visit? I heard you can even stay in the oubliette. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Glasgow Necropolis. This place is exactly what it sounds like. It is a necropolis, and what place is more haunted than a necropolis? The Glasgow Necropolis is a Victorian cemetery located on a hill overlooking Glasgow, Scotland. Over the years, it has become a popular spot for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts due to the many haunting tales that surround the site. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with the necropolis is that 
that of a female ghost. According to legend, she is the ghost of a wealthy woman who was buried in a white dress and veil. Her ghost has been seen by many visitors floating among the tombstones and crypts. Another tale involves the ghost of a man who was buried alive. Legend has it that he woke up in his coffin and tried to escape, but died before he could make it out. Visitors have reported hearing knocking sounds coming from the ground and feeling cold spots near his grave. At the end of the day, while there are thousands of people buried here, only a small group have gravestones and even fewer have names. This only adds to the eerie nature of the cemetery. There are even rumors that a vampire just might be wandering the grounds looking for its next prey. All in all, this place is full of haunting tales, urban legends, and a whole bunch of spook. In our number 8 spot today, we have Pluckley in Kent. The village of Pluckley, located in the county of Kent, England, is known for being one of the most haunted villages in the entire country. There are numerous ghost stories associated with the village, many of which have been passed down through generations. One of the most famous tales is that of the Screaming Woods, a dense forest area on the outskirts of the village. According to legend, the woods are haunted by the ghost of a highwayman who was caught and killed by villagers and his screams can still be heard at night. Another famous ghost story involves the watercress woman, a ghostly figure who is said to appear near a stream in the village carrying a basket of watercress on her arm. It is believed that she drowned in the stream while picking watercress and her ghost has been seen by many villagers over the years. Other reported sightings include ghosts of a monk, a schoolmaster, and even a haunted pub. Despite the spooky tales, Pluckley remains a charming and picturesque village, attracting visitors from around the world. Visit if you dare. In our number 7 spot today, we have Chillingham Castle in Northumberland. Chillingham Castle, located in Northumberland, England, is considered to be one of the most haunted castles in the country. The castle has a dark and mysterious history, and there have been numerous reports of paranormal activity over the years. One of the most famous ghosts associated with the castle is the Blue Boy. According to legend, the ghost is a spirit of a young man who was imprisoned in a room in the castle and left to die. His ghost has been seen by many visitors, appearing as a blue flash of light or as a boy dressed in blue clothing. Another famous tale is that of a specific room in the castle where prisoners were once harmed and then executed. Visitors have reported feeling cold spots, hearing unexplained noises, and even feeling the presence of the ghosts of the tormented prisoners. Other reported sightings include ghosts of a lady in white, a soldier, and even a ghostly cat. In our number 6 spot today, we have Corf Castle. Corf Castle, located in Dorset, England, is a ruined fortress with a rich history and many ghostly tales. The castle was originally built in the 11th century and was destroyed during the English Civil War in the 17th century. One of the most famous ghosts associated with the castle is that of Lady Banks, the wife of the castle's owner during the Civil War. According to legend, she defended the castle against against enemy soldiers and was killed during the siege. Her ghost has been seen wandering the castle ruins dressed in a long white gown. Another famous tale is that of the Drummer Boy, a ghostly figure who is said to haunt the castle gatehouse. According to legend, the boy was caught spying on enemy soldiers and this swiftly led to his demise. His ghost has been seen and heard drumming his sticks on the castle walls. As you walk up the steps to the castle, you might also learn about Edward the Martyr, who was set to be king until until he also lost his life here at the hands of his own stepmother who wanted her own birth son to be the heir to the throne. Other reported sightings include ghosts of soldiers, knights, and even a headless woman. Didn't see that one coming. In our number 5 spot today, we have Whitby Abbey, North Yorkshire. Whitby Abbey is a ruined gothic abbey located in the seaside town of Whitby, North Yorkshire in England, and upon looking at it, it totally makes sense why people say this was part of the inspiration for Dracula. The abbey has a rich history and has been the subject of many haunting tales over the years. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with the abbey is that of the Whitby Abbey ghost. Of course. According to legend, the ghost is the spirit of a young woman who fell to her death from the abbey's high tower while trying to escape her angry husband. Her ghost has been seen wandering the abbey ruins dressed in a white dress. Go 
Elves really seem to vibe with white dresses for some reason. Another famous tale is that of the Black Abbot, a ghostly figure who is said to haunt the Abbey's grounds. According to legend, the Black Abbot was a former abbot of the monastery who was executed for his crimes. His ghost has been seen wearing a black robe and carrying a book. Other reported sightings include ghosts of monks, nuns, and even a ghostly dog. Despite the many spooky tales, Whitby Abbey remains a popular tourist destination, offering visitors a glimpse into the fascinating history of the Abbey and the paranormal activity associated with it. In our number 4 spot today we have Glencoe Argyll. Glencoe is a beautiful and rugged valley located in the Argyll region of Scotland and is pretty famous for being one of the settings in the Bond film Skyfall, but it's also famous for its haunting tales. The area is steeped in history and it all starts back in 1692 with what is known as the Massacre of Glencoe. In that year, soldiers loyal to the English crown killed members of the Macdonald clan who had been hosting them as guests. It is said that the ghosts of the lost Macdonalds still haunt the valley, seeking revenge on their killers. Another famous tale is that of the Grey Man. According to legend, the Grey Man is a ghostly figure who is set to haunt the summits of the mountains in Glencoe. His ghostly presence has been reported by many climbers and hikers over the years. In our number 3 spot today we have Highgate Cemetery, London. This cemetery is located in London and for years it has been the central point of many a horrific tale. These stories include those of demons, ghosts, and all things paranormal, and even the famous Highgate Vampire. Legend goes that the cemetery is home to this vampire as first reported by two girls walking through the area. They claimed to see the dead rise from their graves. Soon after this report came the discovery of animal carcasses, which is never a good sign, but to make matters worse, all of these ones had been drained of their blood. Stories of the vampire spread like wildfire and people were rightfully pretty creeped out. This all led to the vampire hunt that took place on Friday, April 13th, 1973. Friday the 13th. It's never good. During this hunt, residents of the the town began exhuming bodies and then also beheading them. Okay? There are still many rumors and stories that swirl around the area, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say if the gates to hell weren't located here before the beheadings, they definitely are now. In our number two spot today, we have the Skurid Inn in Wales. I love visiting a place that has lots of history. You know when you enter a building and can learn about its history and the people who used to walk in its halls? It's just so interesting and very cool, except for when you're sipping away on a cold tasty pint and find out that where you're sitting is a place that used to be used for public hangings. Yeah, things get a bit more grim when you bring that story up, alright? I don't know if I want what's on those taps. That is exactly the history behind the Skurid Inn. The upper area of the pub was once used as a courthouse where people would stand trial. If the person on trial was convicted and sentenced to death, I guess this place was super convenient because they also wouldn't have to waste any time and could just carry out the sentence right then and there. A bit dark, I'd say. The bar decided it would keep the creepy little cell that was once used to hold the prisoners, which seems like an odd choice, but I guess it's all in the name of history. It is estimated that around 180 executions took place here, and to this day you can still take a peek at the hanging beam that was used way back when. Not exactly sure I'd want to, as there's no way that thing isn't cursed. Many people who have been to the bar state that they have felt things like a sudden drop in temperature, the feeling of a rope around their neck, or even seeing some strange, scary, shadowy figures. I got a strange feeling that if you were to head into the cell that's still around, you just might find yourself in a place that you don't want to go to. In our number one spot today, we have Blickling Hall in Norfolk. Blickling Hall, located in Norfolk, England, is a beautiful, stately home that dates back to the 15th century, and it has been the subject of numerous reported ghost sightings and paranormal activity. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with the hall is that of the Anne Boleyn ghost. According to legend, Anne Boleyn, the second wife of Henry VIII, was born at Blickling Hall, and her ghost ghost is said to haunt the property. Her ghost has been seen wearing a white dress and carrying her own severed head. That is really about as haunting as it gets. Apparently on the anniversary of her execution, people have reported seeing Anne ride up to the estate in a ghostly carriage, driven by a man who is also headless. Another famous tale is that of the screaming lady. It is said that a lady who was killed in the hall has been heard screaming in the corridors at night. The estate is now owned by the National Trust because no one else would want to buy 
by that haunted of a house, and it remains a popular spot for those interested in history as well as the paranormal. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Hoya Bashu Forest. This dense woodland is located in the heart of Transylvania, Romania, which, as I'm sure you're well aware, already has quite the reputation for eerie and spooky things. The forest covers an area of approximately 250 hectares and is known for its unusual and unexplained occurrences, earning it the nickname the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. How convenient. The forest is known for its twisted and gnarled trees, which create a very haunting atmosphere, as well as the strange circular patches of land that dot the area known as Hoya, which some believe to be the result of UFO activity. The forest has also been the site of many alleged paranormal events, including ghost sightings, unexplained lights and sounds, and even disappearances, which is exactly why many believe it is a portal to another world. Some visitors to the forest who didn't disappear have even reported rashes, nausea, and feelings of anxiety afterwards. Despite its eerie reputation, the forest is also a place of immense natural beauty with a diverse range of flora and fauna. The forest is home to many rare and endangered species of plants and animals, including several species of orchids and woodpeckers. The forest is also rich in its history, as it is said it was once the site of a medieval fortress and was an important location during the Second World War. The area is also steeped in local folklore and legends with stories of supernatural beings and witches who are said to dwell in the forest. All in all, this place is jam-packed with spooky stories, strange occurrences, and beautiful but haunting scenery. All the things that make it the perfect place to enter another world. In our number 9 spot today, we have the real Bermuda Triangle, not the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. The Bermuda Triangle is really just the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list today. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the Triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of force or supernatural cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel-like clouds reported in the triangle, which some may believe is the cause of the disappearances. Some others believe it's weather patterns. Some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims. And some people just like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number eight spot today, Today we have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horses would often find their horses refusing to go into the area. So clearly, Something strange was going on in there that was spooking these animals right out. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce basically like a force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like everything is an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number seven spot today, we have Socotra Island. Socotra Island is a remote island located in the Arabian Sea, about 240 kilometers east of the Horn of Africa and 380 kilometers south of the Arabian Peninsula, and it has been described as, quote, the most alien looking place on Earth. It is a part of Yemen and is known for its unique and otherworldly qualities, as well as its rare and endemic plant and animal species. In fact, so many species here are endemic that up to a third of its plant life isn't found anywhere else on Earth. The landscape of Socotra is strikingly surreal, with towering limestone cliffs, deep caves, and white sand beaches. The island is home to unusual rock formations and the infamous dragon blood trees. This strange looking umbrella shaped tree have a red sap inside of them, which is thought to be the dragon's blood of the ancients. In addition to its natural wonders, Socotra has a rich cultural heritage with a mix of African, Arabian, and South Asian influences. The island's inhabitants, the Socotri people, have a unique language and a way of life that has been preserved for centuries. Overall, this island is just truly otherworldly, and it offers a glimpse into a world unlike any other with the island's landscape being compared to that of a science fiction movie set. 
In our number six spot today, we have Salar de Uni. Salar de Uni is the world's largest salt flat located in the southwest of Bolivia near the crest of the Andes. The area spans over 10,000 square kilometers and is characterized by a stunning otherworldly landscape. This peculiar place was formed by the evaporation of a prehistoric lake, leaving behind a thick layer of salt crust that stretches as far as the eye can see. During the rainy season, the salt flat becomes a giant mirror reflecting the sky and clouds in a breathtaking spectacle. It is truly unbelievable. It looks completely fake and is somehow super real. The unique terrain and climate of the area has also given rise to many unusual natural formations. The flat is dotted with small islands of rock and gigantic cacti which serve as a haven for a variety of animal species. Yes, I said giant cacti. While this place is mostly devoid of life, plant or animal, that is safe for these cacti that can grow to be 12 meters or 39 feet tall. The area is also home to many active geysers and hot springs, as well as colorful lakes that are filled with flamingos during certain times of the year. In fact, in November, this place becomes a feeding ground for three South American species of flamingo feeding on local brine shrimps. These are the Chilean, Andean, and rare James flamingos. Aside from its natural wonders, Salar de Uni is also rich in cultural history. The area has been inhabited by the indigenous indigenous Aymara people for thousands of years, and they have maintained their traditional way of life and culture to this day. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment has certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, and and only for short periods of time, so there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean. And I don't know about you, but I feel like there are crazy amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique. So who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number four spot today, we have East Scotia Ridge. In the Southern Ocean, about 2,400 meters down, you'll find this biological community or habitat that was discovered in 2012. East Scotia Ridge is a remote underwater mountain range located between South Georgia Island and the Antarctic Peninsula. The ridge is known for its unique and very mysterious geology, as well as its diverse marine life and harsh environment. It is dark down there, but it is also hot as it is being warmed by hydrothermal vents, and it can reach temperatures up to 382 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely insane. Because of this dark, hot environment, of course we are going to find a whole bunch of new species that were previously unknown to us. Some of these species include a new kind of albino octopus, and also albino hairy lobster that's referred to as a yeti lobster, and apparently even a crab that uses its hair to grow a bacteria that detoxifies the water. Okay? Parallel universe, that's what I'm saying. In our number three spot today, we have the Paris Catacombs. The catacombs in Paris are some of the most famous in the world. This is a place that holds the remains of more than six million people, and it's also the source of an insane amount of urban spooky legends. This ossuary was created originally in an effort to eliminate the overflowing of the city cemeteries. To be honest, this place, after being built, was mostly forgotten, but during the 19th century, it became a novelty place for concerts and private events, which is certainly macabre. After some renovations and construction, they became open to the public in 1874, and they have been the source of much mystery ever since. These catacombs are expansive, with most of them being blocked off to the public, which begs the question, why? In 2009, there is said to have been a video camera discovered inside the catacombs with footage that showed an unidentified man dropping the camera in fear of something that's also unidentified before running away into complete darkness. I'm just saying, although the catacombs sees a ton of visitors every year, I'm not convinced that we know all of what's going on down there. And I don't want to know. 
keep your secrets. In our number 2 spot today we have the Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere and of the 48 species found in the cave, 30 three of them were endemic to just the cave. This cave looks absolutely terrifying, but thank goodness for the brave scientists who don't let that get in the way, because as scary as it looks, it is just as, if not more amazing to be able to hear about what exactly this cave holds. In our number one spot today, we have the Zhangjiajie National Forest Park. This stunning nature reserve is located in the Hunan province of China, and it spans over 11,000 hectares, and is known for its towering sandstone pillars and breathtaking natural scenery. The park is characterized by its its unique and otherworldly landscapes, which includes thousands of the tall sandstone pillars that rise up from the ground. The pillars are often shrouded in mist, creating a very mystical and surreal atmosphere. Visitors can explore the park's many hiking trails, which wind through dense forests and lead to stunning lookout points, including the famous Avatar Hallelujah Mountain that inspired the scenery in the film Avatar. You too can visit Pandora right here on Earth. The area is also home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, including many rare and endangered species. Aside from the natural, this is also a spot rich in history, as it was once the home to many ancient temples and shrines located within the park. The area has been inhabited for over 3,000 years, and visitors can explore many historic sites and learn about the region's rich cultural heritage. Overall, this national forest park is a truly spectacular destination that combines natural beauty, cultural history, and a sense of awe and wonder that is sure to leave visitors feeling as though they went to another world.